Tomorrow, a legislative committee divided on the issue of fish farming in B.C. will deliver a long-awaited report on aquaculture. It's been 18 months in development, the committee poring over scientific reports and holding hearings up and down the coast. But tonight, it has something new to ponder. According to a number of researchers, the vast majority of young wild salmon that have just passed by fish farms on the migration from river to sea are infected with a lethal amount of sea lice. Linda Ellsworth reports. Wow. Lots here. Marine researchers in BC's Broughton Archipelago, a maze of islands and inlets up the coast, had hoped that this year would be easier on young pink and chum salmon smolts, which according to numerous studies, are being decimated by sea lice coming from 29 area salmon farms. When we started out the season this year, lice levels were low, and we thought that the drug treatments on the farms were working, not biologically, but at least working on the sea lice. The drug treatment is called slice, a chemical that's mixed into the pellets that are fed to farm salmon. It's almost like using advantage on your dog, where the, the fish will, will eat the food and the slice is in this, and then as the, the lice eats through the epidermis of the, of the fish, it then will, will actually eat a bit of, of the slice, which then kills the lice. Heavy public scrutiny over the fish farms has led most, if not all, salmon farmers to use slice, and in so doing end the controversy. At least that was their hope. But suddenly in the last few days it's become really clear that the fish that have gone through the Broughton and are now going out into Queen Charlotte Strait are heavily infected. At this moment of time, at the very west end of the Broughton Archipelago, so fish that have been through the Broughton and past all the farms, over 80% of them have a lethal load today. To make matters even worse, because their parents spawned late last fall due to drought, the smolt are emerging from the safety of the rivers, smaller and more vulnerable than usual. We're seeing the vast majority of fish are infected with lice, and it ranges anywhere from one to about seven. This is on a fish that's 40 millimeters long. That's that big. Their whole bodies are pinching around it. It has huge effect. We know for a fish that size that the survival um, of infected fish, fish that are infected with uh, the adult stages of lice, um, is very low. The survival is very low, uh, down around 30 percent or so, um, and possibly lower depending on how many lice are on those fish. For thousands of years, nature has managed to keep baby salmon away from sea lice until they had developed protective scales by keeping them from crossing paths with mature fish, which often carry the parasite without ill effect. But placing salmon farms along their migratory route has changed that. Start off with three, and I think there's now one on this one. I feel like the BC public needs to know that this issue has not been resolved. We have a very serious sea lice problem. So, Craig, you Now, the other hot potato tossed at the B.C. government today is a new report on fish farms in this province. An all-party committee on sustainable aquaculture had spent months on the research, and it came up with some tough recommendations, among them banning fish farms from all coastal waters north of Vancouver Island and moving all existing farms away from open net pens to closed containment systems. Randy Neal has that story. It took 18 months, 800 submissions, and a team of MLAs traveling to 21 communities to come up with recommendations on the future of fish farming in B.C. The biggest and most controversial recommendation, a rapid transition to closed containment systems to be complete within five years. What we heard uh, as we went around British Columbia, I think the number one problem is sea lice. The biggest problem is uh, the danger to our wild juveniles particularly for the pinks and the coho. When they are migrating past salmon farms, they pick up sea lice. And because they are so small, they get devastated. So that's the primary reason. The other reason is simple. We are using our marine environment like a toilet. We're doing this in the commons, in the open ocean. And we need to make sure that we protect both our marine environment and our wild salmon stock. So that's the crucial reason why we have to have a barrier between the wild and the farm. The largely NDP committee came up with 51 other recommendations today, including developing incentives for fish farmers to move to those closed containment systems. No farm sites north of Vancouver Island. Currently, no sites have been approved, but several are pending. News of that recommendation making some native groups who rely on those northern waters for wild salmon very happy. 
we're glad that the committee has listened. We just hope now that the government acts on their recommendation. The committee also suggesting placing a moratorium on new fish farm applications for five years, coming up with better ways to protect juvenile wild salmon to increase wild stocks and limiting production levels at fish farms to current levels. But it's that first recommendation that's causing an uproar in the fish farming community. The committee's recommendations today, although not a surprise, were quite frankly a shock. This nicely worded report purports to recognize the value of salmon aquaculture to BC and then turns around and recommends a series of measures which very clearly say the jobs and opportunities providing, provided by salmon farming, BC's largest <coughs> agricultural export, are not wanted here in BC. We will end up leading the world. Once we have solved this problem, we will be exporting this technology all around the world. And we'll create another pi price point for farmed Atlantic salmon. The Liberals are under no pressure to accept any of these recommendations, and it'll likely be several months before we hear either way.